St. Andrew, an immediate former state minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness and newly appointed minister of state in the Ministry of National Security. That's, a, that's an amazing move from Ministry of Health and Wellness to National Security. But this interview was booked long before the prime minister made his decision. None of us knew that this would happen. So um, we've invited Juliet here. And one of the big things that we wanted to talk to her about was maternal health, which is one of the things that she was responsible for at the Ministry of Health. She still has the knowledge. She still has the wisdom and understanding. And I wanted to say good morning to you. Good morning. And it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So, so you are the MP for West Rurals. So where is that? Um, well, it's a huge constituency, and so West Rural St. Andrew, would, we start at East Kirkland Heights in Red Hills. Yeah. We go all the way over up to Rock Hall, mm -hmm. then all the way down into Lawrence Tavern, into Parks Road first, then into Lawrence Tavern area, into Brandon Hill. So I also border St. Mary, I border St. Catherine, back over to Stony Hill, right? You know, I'm sure everybody knows where Red Gal Ring is. That's so I start... I, yes, yes. Right up there, and, so. Right. Yeah. Right in that little second. The go-kart, they used to do go-karting really? there, right? It was a very famous area for go-karting um, years ago. And so right there at Red Gallery is where I stop. So it's a, it's a pretty large area. But, you know, um, and the reason why I started the interview like this is that there's been a lot of conversation about MPs and how much MPs are paid. How do you manage such a big constituency? <laughs> Boy, I tell I don't you. I don't mind digging about your own bigger. It, it, it takes a lot. Um, it, it takes a lot. We have, you know, over 37,000 per persons that's on the voters list. But as you know, not everybody is on that particular mm -hmm. list. So we have, we have a, quite a number of persons in the constituency. About how many communities say, do you think you have? We, we, over 60. Over right. Yeah. Yeah. None so are speaking, rural and they're stuff. rural and of course a little urban. So the little urban would would be Stony Hill mm -hmm. and a little urban which would be Red Hills, a little section. How many and I know I put in on the spot, how many miles per year do you think you drive? Oh gosh. When I sold my vehicle, I had it for five years, I had a hundred and like holy per thousands of miles on the vehicle <laughs> and sh what do you call it rack and pinion rack and pinion gone um that cost me a lot of money i had to ch i was changing tires like ever so often right. um in the cons and i had a suv um so quite a lot of miles yeah quite well, a lot of miles i put in well for me i i, I gave up the suv because it wasn't working out to buy a pickup oh yeah 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 that <laughs> that would actually that's what i'm going to be getting shortly like, yeah, the suv wasn't working in north central at all yeah yours I is mean, very rugged very rugged very hilly <laughs> very you know remember i stretched from the border of st catherine to the border of manchester yes yes you, so, i've been there so, so yes. There's a section of my constituency where I have to drive to 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 what two other constituencies to get there. Yes, you know. But so you are you you were. And you 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 stretch out too because you don't have a lot of houses. <laughs> it's like farmlands. Yes, you do. Uh, mine's not like that. You yeah. you do see the houses. I've seen you doing a lot of work there. I see you building a lot of roads. Yes, I see you doing a lot of um um water projects and all of those things i have to really thank the government the prime minister um on really we're looking at transforming jamaica and when i when i mention this i have received so many water projects that is important and one is coming soon we're gonna that should be going to procurement shortly that's a 795 million dollar water project how many people that run on you're talking about over ten thousand because um Lawrence Tavern. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Tavern. Now we have four tributaries that we're we're getting That's rivers. Rivers that where water is coming, you know, to a particular mm -hmm. place with a put a pump house, and it's just not enough. Mm -hmm. Why? You over the years you've had, you know, five people are living somewhere, now you have 15. And um with climate change, the rivers you're not getting the same amount of water and you have people moving into the communities. And so from Sol from Parks Road, Salisbury Plain, into Cavaliers, into 
um, Lawrence Tavern, as close to the border, where we call border of St. Mm. Mary, is where this water project is going to enhance mm. for the people uh, um, in those communities. So you're talking about a whole lot of people that this water project is going to help. And another one also in the Red Hills area, mm -hmm. which is going to be going over from Ferry, mm -hmm. is called Ferry to Rock Pond mm -hmm. that the Prime Minister mentioned um, in his in um, this year. So we should see that one possibly taking off next next year. Um, but lots happening in the constituency that I'm really excited about. One of the things that um, one of the big issues that Jamaica has been fighting with over the years is how to protect our expectant mothers. Mm -hmm. and our, our our mothers who have had children. And one of the areas in your ministry that you were responsible for in the Ministry of Health was maternal health. What does that mean, though? What is maternal health? Very dear to me. And as you, you said it, um, also um, in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, they're looking to transform. We're building new hospitals. Um, we're upgrading clinics. We have over 300 clinics um, to upgrade those. So we're looking at upgrading primary health care. Um, maternity, we have to really focus on our mothers. And it doesn't just start with when a woman is pregnant. It starts even before the woman is pregnant. And so when you look at even the Jamaica moves, mm -hmm. we're now focusing on pregnant mothers, telling them that you can exercise. When you look at the WHO, when you look at the standards in the world, um, we are not where we should be when it comes to maternal deaths. Um, and what is that? So, so when you look at the MMR, maternal mortality ratio, there. So here's the thing. Well, let me stop you. <laughs> we in government know the bigger than. Okay. Right. Many so I'm going to break it down. Know, so I want you to right. bring it down to grow. Right. And so you're looking at how many women die, mm -hmm. uh, um, looking at how many births mm -hmm. happen in, in Jamaica and how many women die. Right. So during childbirth, during childbirth okay. or even after the maternal mortality ratio is doesn't just stop when you like as soon as you give birth. It's also within that first, I believe, year. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that they also look at because you have comorbid women can develop comorbidities even after and they die because of mm -hmm. the childbirth. And so we want to make sure that we enhance women's health mm -hmm. before, during and after well, pregnancy. That, and so this is why um, we were on and, 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 and the Ministry of Health and Wellness have been doing a good job. Mm -hmm. I think we can't. They can do better. And so some of the things that were instituted, one of the things that we came up with um, lately is this Start Right program mm -hmm. and and with a snuggleness included in that. When you look at the maternal mortality ratio, we are when at... You look at how many women die. die right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at... A hundred, it's, it's, it was at 134 per 100,000 live births. So for every so, 100,000... Babies that that black get born in Jamaica, a hundred and thirty-four mothers. No, no, right, no. And so we look. You have to now look at how many women give birth. There's there's about thirty-one thousand women give birth. So you have right. to divide. That's how you divide it. So you're looking at about seventy. Where it's at now, we're looking at about seventy or eighty women who who died, say last year, mm -hmm. in the last year, two years. And that must be a very traumatic that thing is, because it is. It affects both the father, it affects the family, the it baby. affects the baby. Exactly. Because the baby you now has to grow up without a mother. Right, right. What we're trying to get that down to, and we don't want any women to die, is mm -hmm. about twenty five. That is what the WHO. So we should be at seventy per one hundred thousand live births. Instead of instead of one third. Where we are now. Right. right. Because you know, um Nobody sees when a woman is having a baby. The public, yeah. you, I've always said to people, the only time you go to a hospital is in the meet. Nobody volunteers right, to right. just visit a hospital to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Either you have somebody there or you have a medical issue. So a lot of these important things that we're doing, people will not see them. Mm -hmm. It's not a pothole. It's not a street light. Right. It's not a water project where you can pass it every day. And sometimes I think sometimes we ignore as a society some of these very important things. Right. And so the, the, the Ministry of Health and Wellness in the last few years, they there's a maternal review. Um, so the, the, the all the, the 
practitioners, they get together and they do a review as to what is happening. How do we solve this problem? How do we prevent some of these deaths? Um, and there are various reasons why the women die in childbirth. What are some of those? So you have preeclampsia, which is a, you develop high, you can develop hypertension. That means high blood pressure. High blood pressure, right. diabetes. Um, so you have so they develop these things they, while they're can, pregnant. Yes, these are things that can happen to to women. Gestational diabetes. So that is when you're pregnant, you end up with diabetes. Um, you know, so why hemorrhaging. Women, why women have babies? Then? Oh boy, and this is why. <laughs> this is why we <laughs> must so, understand so many things that, can, that can happen to you, right? And so, um, you also have um, hemorrhaging. So this is why we ask sometimes for the man, the father, to give blood or yes. family members to give blood um, when a woman is pregnant because you don't know she might end up hemorrhaging and need blood a blood transfusion or something like that and so those are some of the, the main causes of deaths and the women can also develop these things and end up dying after they give birth when they go home so it's really important to make sure that the mothers are eating healthy that they're maintaining a healthy birth weight that they're coming to the hospital at when they find out that they're pregnant to make sure that they're going to their health, their clinics, make sure they're going to the teen clinics. If it is their teenagers, make sure that they're going to the hospital, seeing their obstetrician. And also, um, and so this start right program was to really get mothers to come because there are still a lot of mothers who may have one child or two children that feel like, Oh, I'm pregnant the third time. I don't need to go to no doctor to see because I've done this before. Mm -hmm. No, I would implore all women, no matter what, how many children you've had to make sure that you're seeking um, the proper health care um, during your pregnancy to so, prevent some of these things from happening. So so you guys have a program now to, to basically reduce the amount of women who die um, during childbirth in Jamaica. Um, do the conditions of the hospitals have something to do with it? Um, there are various things that go in. There are times when we may, they may not have the equipment. And so there are certain things that may not be there. And I think Minister Tufton is doing a, a good job. I think he's looking at the overall plan now of, mm -hmm. um, you know, infrastructure, what should be there. Um, maybe ultrasound was a problem. That is something the butterfly, ultrasound, handheld butterfly. Um, I have to thank so American. More, how much are you getting? We got from American Friends of Jamaica and the, the Jaja Foundation. They're able, this is something Jaja Foundation has been doing is coming in and, um, actually teaching um, as far as the technical aspect of the ultrasound machines and doing different things in the hospital. We got about, I think it was 20, I can't, I can't remember, I think it was about 24 that we got of the unheld butterfly So this is better than the machine. one that you have to push It's around. big, right. Those are yeah, big. So These are smart. something like a phone. It's like okay. a phone and you just put it on the mom, mommy's tummy and you're able to actually see what is happening with the baby. Um, and you can look at other things, of course. It's an ultrasound machine, so you can look at other other parts of the but body. You, but you guys are, are, so like, for example, you're fixing Cornwall Regional. Yes. You're going to fix um, Spanish There's Town a hospital. new hospital coming for Spanish Town. Right. That ground should be broken. Minister knows more about that, but ground should be broken around June, July. Right. or so um university hospital is being upgraded so gonna that's going to be about seven stories i believe seven uh, stories. five or seven stories right. yes for both um spanish town hospital and um university hospital right. bust bustamante children's hospital is also supposed to go up and uh, and one of the things that's been happening you know, we've been building want, our hospitals out i want to stop you we need to go up i want to, to to delve a little bit into the building of the hospital let's start with because this has a lot to do with maternal health as well. The infrastructure that is yes. available for the mothers, the type of wards, the type of equipment. So we had an issue, long-standing issue with Cornwall, where we had to basically gut Cornwall, take out the roof, the windows, everything. Um, and now we, have, we are spending several billion dollars to improve Cornwall. But beside Cornwall, you're building a children's hospital. Yes, right next door. And that is possibly going to be finished, of course, before Cornwall. Cornwall, mm -hmm. we plan to, the ministry plans to possibly move in at least a few floors by December, mm -hmm. which is which is what Minister Tufton has stated. And that includes And that facilities. includes, that is not just building a building. That includes putting in equipment, all the necessary equipments at this time. I think these are all going through the procurement process now. MRI machines, 
um, CAT scan machines for all the major hospitals right across the island. Because one of the programs that minister had to do when we came in, a lot of the machines were obsolete, they were broken, they were not being serviced. He's putting now a service agreement um, with, for these machines. We're looking at leasing, the minister is looking at leasing machines so that there's a service agreement with it um, so that the machines can be serviced so they're not broken down and just left. And that is a problem. What How is mitigated that is by and you are a member of parliament, you know how many people come to your office for <laughs> CAT scan and MRI and yes, ultrasound yes, and yes. what have you. Yes. We would have to use our constituency development fund, which mm -hmm. is not a lot, to when it comes to welfare. We get $2 million, a lot of people don't know it, to put in welfare. Mm -hmm. When you take your funerals and all those CAT scan by, in no time your money is finished. Well, a lot of people don't know that, um, so for example, in my office, we pay for hundreds of prescriptions. Hundreds. And we pay for costs that people come and they can't afford to the buy pins. The, to buy the pins. Like the bike guys meet an accident and they need this circular thing around their foot. We help with that as well. Yes. yes. Um I try to help with the new hospital that we have. Yeah, I get a new hospital in, in Chapel. Yeah, well, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> But it's 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 a good look. It's a, it's good, a good look. look. Um but we are we leave in Cornwall now and we're going to Maypen, because you're going to upgrade Maypen and Lionel Town as well. Yes. And some work has gone into Lionel Town. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a wall. So mm -hmm. they, they, they did some upgrade to that. But I think they're looking to, to upgrade some of those smaller hospitals that take, which, you know, you, if you can't get to um, Kingston, that, mm -hmm. th that those hospitals are there. And they're very busy. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at Lionel Town, you know, that, that's been there for quite some time. And you get the history behind it with, mm -hmm. was it like a barracks? or something like that so um we're looking to upgrade all of those hospitals and also the the health centers mm -hmm. are also being upgraded and they're opening we're looking at longer hours for the health centers to be open to um so a lot for, of the clinics that the, the clinics, maternal clinics usually don't take place at the hospital in many cases they take place at like the community hospital in chapel town and they the have and they also health. have teen clinics right so there are teen clinics specifically for those teenagers, some of them are open on Saturdays, but they mm -hmm. do have those, um, you know, separate so, and apart. So you're upgrading hospitals in Carolina. You're also building Spanish Town. You say it's going to be about five, seven floors, you said? Spanish Town is going to, I think it's seven floors, I believe. But, yeah. you know, um, Spanish Town Hospital, people, we never knew, we never knew that Spanish Town Hospital was not a grade A hospital or type one hospital, as they call them, um, because... Of the amount of people that we see go to Spanish Town Hospital, three thousand mothers give over three thousand mothers give birth at Spanish Town Hospital every year. Every year, and there are six thousand births we at have a, the Jubilee. Let Hospital. us take a call before we continue. Um, I think we have a caller online. Um, caller. Morning, Minister. Good morning. Good morning. Minister Pat Bird Flynn. Morning. Yes. Firstly, I want to congratulate Minister. I'm very very happy to have you. I gather you are the first female to be placed at that ministry, and I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Um, I have a matter I want to raise to your attention to see if you can perhaps do some checks on it and see how we can advance in that area. And it's in relation to the JCS. Um, currently, there is a, a, what is it, protocol says that women who have children younger than three years old are not able to join the JCS. They have to be older than three in order for them to um, apply and to be accepted to join, if they, even if they meet the other criteria, um, which is, I mean, for me, alarming, because clearly this regulation doesn't exist for, for fathers. And, you know, obviously there are women who can find the persons to attend to their children and who are looking to, be able to be better providers for their families, but they aren't able to be a part of the JCF unless they have their children are older. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I know this came into being a long time ago. It certainly has not been reviewed. Um, I don't know what your views are on it, but I would love if you could look into the matter and see, you know, how we can create more balance in that area. Thank you very much for your for your question. I really appreciate it. Well, Juliet has not even been given her I office know. yet. I, 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 no, I know. 
I'm aware. I'm not I'm aware. Right. Yes. So I'm sure she will look into it. I'm sure she'll be speaking to Dr. Chang about it because you're right. There, there are some things that we need to evolve, but we have to look into it. And I really thank you for raising the point um, so that we can do it. That's the first job knowing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I heard you call, and again, as I said, I have not touched in the office yet. So, I um, but I, I I hear your your um your concerns. What's your name, caller? Gabriel. I'm Gabriel. All right, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Um, so Gabriel is giving you your first job. And as a woman, <laughs> this is why she's now you know put that on me. Thank you. So, thank you, yeah, thank Gabriel. You. All right. No so problem. you were saying that. 3,000 women give birth in Spanish. Approximately 3,000 births happen at Spanish Town Hospital annually. So I thought women only give birth at Victoria Jubilee. <laughs> That's the highest. So Victoria <laughs> Jubilee sees about 6,000 births 6, um, on any yeah on any given year. Yeah, so the, so Mayfair would see births, Victoria Jubilee Everywhere, would see births. Everywhere, Mandeville. Every major yeah, hospital every sees major birth. Mm. Wow. So, so, so childbirth is one of the main um, rules of hospitals that we have. <laughs> it seems so, right? Yeah. Um, and then you have, you know, you have, you have a lot of quite a number of patients um, going to these hospitals. So Spanish Town is going to get upgraded, and I'm and I'm sure it's going to University get, Hospital right. will be upgraded so, as well. But University Hospital is not a government hospital. No, it's part. Well, yeah, because it's, it's a lot of people don't know that. Part, know. People, yeah, a lot of people don't know that University Hospital is not. Strictly a public hospital. It's, right, you have to pay. You have to pay. It belongs to when the you university. go in. <laughs> yeah. Show them your show them your card. But what happened? You guys did something the other day where when we had the respiratory illness, we, everybody went to university for those things. Yes. Every child was admitted freely. And and I really commend um, the ministry for doing that. Minister Tufton recognized um, clearly off the bat that um, you know there was a need because children Bustamante the biggest. Um, and only children hospital that we have mm -hmm. at this moment um, would have been overcrowded with all the other things that's happening and no respiratory um, mm -hmm. infections. That's like colds and flus. Exposed and flus and people are saying the bad flu. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you did get it, but no, never, the, there, was get, get <laughs> there was a bad I, flu. There was a bad flu going on. COVID. You're like, oh, you're everybody, so lucky. Was, everybody getting COVID and oh, I'm gosh. like, why did they leave me out? Oh God! I don't get colds. I don't get flu. Wow, I got it. I can't say I didn't get COVID, but yes. So they made allowance for children to be able to see in there as well, right. which I thought was really good. So, so we're on top. The ministry was on top of things. But you weren't only in charge of maternal health at the ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, you were in charge of several other things. One yes. of them is drug abuse. Does Jamaica have a drug abuse problem? We are seeing a lot of our youngsters now really dibbling and dabbling in certain things. Like what? Yeah, Molly is, we hear the songs. I mean, I know them. <laughs> My generation. But you hear the songs and I think that it, that was a major concern. And what we did, we went around. So Molly, hold on. Molly, what's Molly? Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> I that don't. The, but but so I hear the I hear the songs too, um, and I know of incidents where schools have found children selling Molly on the right, camp, right, campus. So, right, right. So that's one of the issues. What are some of the other things that people are doing? Just um, you hear about mushrooms. You hear about other things. Um, ec ecstasy is kind of like Molly, I guess. Mm. It gives you that euphoric kind of feeling, out of body kind of experience, I guess. Um, so what we want to, what we did was to make sure that we. Um, had school, we had like a tour, mm -hmm. school tour to go around to the various schools to educate our youngsters about the dangers of drugs. What are the dangers uh, uh, of drugs? Though? What are the dangers of drugs? I mean, these things, That's remember, what we have to remember is a child's brain is not developed fully until you're like 23 or so, right? And so when you're dibbling and dabbling in drugs at 13, 14 or even younger, it affects, it can affect your, your brain. And so that is the reason why we had to go into the schools to make sure that we're educating our youngsters about the dangers so of drugs. So if a parent thinks their child is on drugs. There were some doing, sorry, not to cut you, but there are also some doing, mixing things. They're mixing all kinds of stuff. And you see it on, on you know, TikTok or what have you. You see these things where they're mixing certain things and children are ending up in the hospital. Their hearts racing. Oh, you mean like they... they 
Well, them call cold it medicine cold, and different right, right. different things That's um mean. yeah and make, doing brownies or what have you and then they end up at the hospital with a heart rate that is elevated we want to make sure that um we wanted to make sure that the youngsters understand brownies is like the thing that they put the marijuana marijuana in, in right okay. right i heard right. a story once of somebody who went to a party and they had brownies and they slept for three days yeah but they, but they're also I'm glad they woke up that so we have this thing in Jamaica where we say weed is whatever. We, we don't see weed as drugs. But there are some persons who cannot, who are, who are vulnerable to marijuana. It can trigger yeah. a psychological um, episode. Mm -hmm. so some kind of psychosis or something like that because, again, we're not all made equal. So what, what, <laughs> what, so what affects me a particular way may mm -hmm. affect you in a different way. So if I'm if I a, a parent who, who thinks my child is doing drugs or I'm an adult who has a friend who is a drug addict or I'm a drug addict myself, how do I get help? And there are, I don't have the hotline. You're putting me on the spot. I don't have, but we do have a hotline. There is a hotline mm -hmm. for, for, for that. Um, and, um, you know, during our course of going out to the different schools, we had those numbers to make sure that the children would have it. Mental health. We understand now, mm -hmm. even since COVID, mental health is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is focused on that as well. So it all comes together with, you know, the drug, ab drug abuse and mental health because some of them seek these things, whatever it is, whatever it is that they're going to take because of something that's probably happening to them at home um, and they don't know how to really, you know, they'll have no one to really talk to. I think so, we have a voice note on. Okay. We have two voice notes, so let's try and get them. Right. So Nadine, let us hear what the public has to say. Um, Good morning, Minister. Yeah, you're the MP for my hero. I live in Park Seoul. But I want to ask this question. When do you plan to fix the roads in Cavaliers? The roads are really bad. Beer possible. Trust me. I'm calling it called Safakana. Beer possible. The roads are really bad, man. Really Thank you very much for that, Carla. You know that. Yes, era. Safa Corner. Yes, it's a roly pa bamboo and it's shaded. And what happens when you patch it? As soon as you patch it and rainfall, it washes away. There is a procurement. The, it's going through the procurement process now. Um, and persons may not know. The procurement process takes a while. So the last time when I looked and Minister um, Warmington showed me, it is still in that process of going through. Because so I think it's a fixed. large, it's going to be fixed. Yes. So yes. you're going to. Proper fixing with drain. Proper and fixing drain. And just like we did Temple Hall, we had to cut down some bamboo and, you know, because it was shade in the area and the same thing was happening. We had to give some sunlight in the area. Because what happens, I find, and I spoke to engineers, when you have a lot of overhead, Overhanging. The, 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 the road doesn't get a chance to dry. Nope. It so, stays wet. And asphalt and water are not good friends. Nope. So you, you put asphalt down and if the area is saturated with water, or moisture content is too high, then because asphalt actually likes sunlight. Yeah. Because what happens is when you put on the asphalt and it cracks and the heat catches it, it self heals itself. So if it is too cold, mm -hmm. it will not self heal itself because it will not come back together. So, so bamboos are really terrible. Bamboos are terrible. And it's that Safacon is filled with bamboos and there's no sunlight. Absolutely none. But there is, it's planned. Um, there's plan to actually fix it. Once I hear though, Carla, um, more as far as where we are, I will definitely have a meeting with Cavaliers, a residents, to let them know where we are with that. We have a lot of meetings. I see you having meetings. I had a meeting every, last week, Sunday. Month. Well, when you know, I have I have good citizens in West Rural. They have their <laughs> citizens association. They call me to their meetings. Right. So there was another voice note. Good morning, Minister. This is Scott Byrne Fling. Good morning. The uh, my question is about the part office. From last year, the thirtieth of April last year. My daughter died and I go down there to get assistance, funeral grant, and they sign up everything and says they will call me. And until now, one year gone, Miss Miss Um one minister, one year gone, and I'll know it's still no process as yet. What is going on? All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to take the number for that person because we didn't get much information. 
And you know, we can call the Ministry of Labor and find out what the issue is. We can call the Ministry of Labor. Actually, a, another resident said this to me, I think, yesterday or two days ago. And so we're really happy, though, mm -hmm. because Minister Samuda just assigned. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are asking, why are they giving us assignment? You know, why are they giving us social workers? <laughs> it's for these reasons, because people come to us. They're looking to us mm -hmm. as a representative to really answer some of these questions. And we really can't readily answer them but we'll point them in the right direction so your road conversation has caused me somebody on tiktok to ask me when is blackwood road gonna fix <laughs> so <laughs> the good news is that every year I, good news yeah every year i patch either blackwoods or um or um crawl beckford crawl mm -hmm. so last christmas because i knew i was gonna spend a lot of money on beckford crawl i, I didn't we didn't patch a lot of it so we just finished about three weeks ago patching all the way from Summerfield all the way up to almost reaching Blackwood Square, um, Beckford Cross Square. We had done some patching to Blackwoods the year before. So what I, I'm going to do in Christmas, when I get my Christmas allocation, I'm going to continue from where I stopped at Beckford Crawl, going all the way up to my border, because not all of Blackwoods belong to me. The bad part of the Blackwood Road is not my road. So we're gonna be patching the rest of Blackwoods um from Beckford Crowd to Blackwoods. Um but, and he'll talk to the other person, the yeah, other MP, I speak right? To the MP to also partner with him. Um but this is not about me, this is about Juliet Cuthbert. <laughs> so why the other area that you're responsible for is blood bank. Why Jamaicans yes. don't like giving blood? We don't have a culture to give blood. We just don't. And I think, let me tell you where this, I think years ago, we would always think it's just gunshot victims that, and we're not going to give no blood to those people, but there's so many people, cancer patients need blood. And there's so many of our children who have cancer. Um, so many of our well, adults who have cancer. Didn't, didn't you just say you're going to do some work at Kirkland Heights recently? Kirkland Heights is getting a $108 million road. And I had a meeting with them on Sunday with the, with the residents. Okay. Um, so was it Sunday or Saturday? On TikTok a while ago. Oh, so yeah. Nice. East Kirk, the, the contract was already awarded to someone. It's going to cabinet, I believe, to, for sign off. And then after that, it's road fix. All right. Road so continue start. with, with um, Amber. Um, yes. And it's uh, that's actually, by the way, that's the highest I've ever gotten for any road in since I've been here. Okay. So I'm very excited so that I was able Kirkland to lobby the people of Kirkland. They're very happy. Um, yes. So blood is very important. We must develop a culture. There's We only have 11 um, blood collection sites in Jamaica. We have 14 parishes and 11 blood collection sites. We must develop more blood collection sites. And since my tenure at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I was able to get Spanish Town as one of the blood collection sites. They are collecting blood. People, I'm asking you to go to Spanish Town on a Saturday. They're open right now. We're trying to get another day. But well, why you need blood, though? What do you mean? Well, you, you need blood. You know, I, I just said it. Well, you I, need blood. Let me explain to you. A mother Mr. who's... A mother I want who's... to explain to you. It might sound to some persons that I ask some questions which sound so simple. Right. But I am learning that sometimes you have to break down the thing. Right. So people don't know that if you're meeting an accident, accident you need blood. Surgeries. Surgery, you need blood. People who have people, cancer. Yes. Um, mothers who are giving birth. Mm -hmm. And a whole host and there of are other reasons. And platelets. there are people who can't. And platelets are so important. Right. Um, when you get a cut, cut platelets that help it to right, heal. Right, to heal. Right. And so we need blood constantly. Right now, the blood bank is at 50%. We need to be at at least 78%. I say 100 but we're aiming for at least 70%. So we need to, what we did, and uh, we did a blood drive was for schools. We went on a school blood drive. I wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we were supposed to do some more. Mm -hmm. And we collected about 84, I forgot, 84 pints of blood, I believe, which can actually help about 200 and it, whatever we collected can help about 250 mm -hmm. persons. Because um, one, mm -hmm. one, if you give blood, you can help three people. But people don't realize that so as I said to you, nobody goes to a hospital for no reason. Right. So when you had when you have an accident with with, with four people Trauma. injured. Yeah. Car accidents and, and we're getting a lot of those. That's blood. Yeah. When you have the shootings, the stabbings, the blood. maimings, that's blood. When you're doing any surgery at any time, at any time, any one of us can have can need a surgery. Mm -hmm. So so which so tell me, um, has people's view of 
of giving blood changed over the years? Is it improving? I think it's improving. Um, what the ministry had were certain amb ambassadors, younger mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. um, that we have in the system. Um, and they're the ones, the messengers. You want them to really carry the message. And this is why it was so important to really start the school blood drive. If you inculcate that at a young age and mm -hmm. explain to the youngsters in school, of course, you have to be 17 and old, older. So we're targeting the six farmers, the, you know, the six farmers. If you can get them to have a, an appreciation and an understanding as to why mm -hmm. they should give blood, I think as you get older then you become you can become a donor because there are people who give blood like every couple of months every three months yes right there are people who they go down to the blood bank where is the blood bank so you have the blood bank at slipe road that is downtown downtown yes. right yeah. close to the hospital mm -hmm. you have chess hospital which is in barbican barbican Ligan, you have yeah. university hospital which is in papine. papine you have saint catherine at um, at Spanish Town Hospital right. um, that you can give blood. You have Mandeville Hospital, Mandeville Hospital. Um, that you can give blood. Um, you have Cornwall Regional that you can give blood. Port Antonio Hospital that you can give blood. And right now, well, before I left, we we're trying to develop one because St. Thomas is about to boom. Mm -hmm. Right, we see what's happening in St. Thomas. I'm, I'm from St. Thomas, and so we were trying, we we're trying to get one, um, a center in St. Thomas to actually. We identified a building already, mm -hmm. and it's just now for. Yes, from St. Thomas. I'm, we're, we're I'm from Thomas. Port Moran, St. Thomas. Yes, very That's proud. It's in the heart of St. Thomas. It's in the heart of St. Thomas. What was St. Thomas like while you were growing up? It was fun, lots of fun. What were the roads? The roads were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> But I had fun. Yes. Well, how, how was it for me? You know? So you, so when, I had you started fun. running in St. Thomas? Yes, yes. Which school was that? That was at Port Morant All Age. And then I went to Morant Bay All Age. And then went to Morant Bay High. So, But when I see the transformation now, mm -hmm. I'm like so excited. Where I'm from, I'm actually seeing buildings going up. That mm -hmm. in all of my years, I've never seen any new building going up. Mm -hmm. There's a new, a sh like a shopping center coming there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am so excited as to what is going to happen, especially Morant Bay, where we used to hang out after school. Is Morant Bay, where good year, Princess Margaret mm -hmm. is in Morant Bay. But it was upgraded recently, wasn't it? It is the same Princess Margaret Hospital. And so you find where some work was done, some new machines, and they upgraded where the... um the admission center is because it's nothing like when I was a child. So it's, it's a better, it's hospital, a better no? hospital. However, needs, I think we're going to need to upgrade with the influx of people that's possibly going to move there. I'm sure that something would have to be looked at by the so government. You're proud of St. Thomas. I am no. very proud of St. Thomas. <laughs> You know, one of no. the interesting things about and, and, it. And I was proud of St. Thomas before. It's an interesting story because when we just came into office, everybody was quarreling with us saying, we promised to fix St. Thomas and we're not fixing yeah. St. Thomas. Yeah. Somebody on Twitter, every every couple of months, they used to say, oh, well, you announced in that time that you're going to build a new town center. Where is the, Where town, is the center? town center? You announced that you're going to fix the road. Where is the road? I know we're doing all Well, let me tell you, I'll pass by. I went to St. Thomas two weeks ago for a funeral. Right. And I look, they're widening the road where the town center is going to be. There's a nice bridge there. Across there is a, where, there's a field where I used to run mm -hmm. um, ever so often. But I'm telling you, when I look and see what is taking place now, I'm saying I need to go buy a piece of land. You can. I don't. I have land, land in Saint Thomas. I know. <laughs> I, I need to go buy a piece of land think. in Saint Thomas. So, but you know, it's it took a, me an hour and a half to get there, even though the road is not. Before it was taking me two and a half hours right. with the bad roads. But you know, now it's taking me an hour and a half, and I can imagine when they finish, mm -hmm. it's going to take me forty minutes no, to get to Saint Thomas. There's no development, Juliet, that doesn't come with inconvenience. Yes, I remember when we were fixing um, Constant Spring Road and we were fixing Hagley Park Road. Yes. Everybody in Kingston was upset with us. Oh, yeah. And look at it now. When we were fixing Barbican, it was the same thing. You cannot do development. And we have to apologize to the people at St. Thomas. Yes, um, yes. We, 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 it's not, we're not saying that your inconvenience doesn't matter to us. But we're just asking for your understanding patience, and your patience, patience. Because I can guarantee you when these developments are finished, your lives are going to be that much better. And nobody's going to say, like they used to say, that nobody remembers said that. Listen, <laughs> when I fly, I fly the other day and the road not done. I fly from um, Harbour View mm -hmm. to get to Yalas in no time. Drive. Not Drive, fly. not fly. <laughs> Drive. <laughs> and I got there so fast. I'm like, I'm in Yalas already. 
Yes. Because another piece of the highway finished. And, and I was like, whoa, I can't. I cannot wait till they open one in Bull Bay. Right. That is going to even, uh, trust me, I, I am really excited. Well, Jamaica now knows that you're from St. Paul. <laughs> so the, the other thing that you do, and I saved it for last because it's very important. Um, a lot of people don't like talking about it, but I think it's something that we all should talk about because it affects some persons in our population. It affects 30,000 Jamaicans. That's HIV. Yep. 30,000 Jamaicans. There's the, we have about 30,000 people living with HIV in Jamaica. But HIV is not the same as it was before. I mean, back in the day, you got HIV and you're dead. You die. No. It is not a death sentence. No, you can live a full life. Look at Magic Johnson. Yes. He has had HIV for what, 30 years? So I am imploring anyone who tested and tested positive for HIV, I'm imploring you to go on medication now. Get on your medication. Isn't stay on your medication. It's free. The government provides. Yes. So and we have different partners. So if you have HIV, government will pay for your medication. Yes. Yes. It's free. Do we pay for medication for anybody else like that? We do, because we do have offset where NHF, um, okay. so yeah, so they can get it at a minimal cost. Right. Minimal cost. So for a person who discovers, <laughs> did the test and now finds out this afternoon that they have HIV. And let me say, you can know through the NFPB, they, we came up, um, was it a year and a half ago? What is NFPB? National Family Planning um, Board. Board. Okay. They, we now have a self-test kit. Mm -hmm. That you can actually go to the pharmacy, any pharmacy, purchase a self-test kit, and uh, test yourself at home. And within 30, 20, 30, second, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you can find out if you're HIV positive or not. And when you do, we ask that you go see your healthcare provider, your private doctor. There's also a, a MOU signed with private, public-private partnership with mm -hmm. USAID um, to actually, for persons who mm -hmm. want to go to private because of the stigma and discrimination that may come with it, that they can go to private and still get treated. So we warn persons. There are also other agencies. You have JASL. You have other um, non-governmental agencies that persons can actually seek their care. But what I'm asking is for person to really get on treatment, stay on treatment, and so you can be suppressed, virally suppressed. And what? that is a problem that we're faced with. Somebody says, hold on, somebody's on TikTok saying why they can't give blood if they're vaccinated. I don't understand that. Nothing, Nagosa, that I'm aware of. Not, because of course, you can be, of course you can give blood if you're... And that is not true. So, so you, see, you see why it's important to keep um, um, these programs because we're able to... It is a question. Yeah. Dispel so, that myth. So that, the person who gets who finds out that they have HIV today, what's the first thing that they should do? Seek medical, seek uh, healthcare. Whoever you feel like you can trust, go to that person and get um so you can get on medication right away. So will anybody know? Um, these places that I said, if you go to private or if you go to public, um, we are also making sure that the clinics know there's no special room for you to go to a special so day to go to back in the day you see a big right right <laughs> right you can you you blend right in and you can go and seek care because we want people we understand that jamaica we're not where we're supposed to be and so we want to make sure that um persons are seeking care we are supposed to get to a particular um cascade we're not there we are um losing people to stay on their meds and we want Jamaicans to stay on their medication. We also see a trend in the ministry where there is a trend from 15 to 24. We're seeing an increase. That's the people 15 years old. 15 years point. old to 24, 25. We're seeing an increase in HIV. Is it that people not using protection as much anymore? People think that, you know, young people, sometimes you just think that, oh, you know, I'm not going to die. I'm, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm not going to catch anything. And they're not using protection. So, so, the, so the rule is... Protection. Protection. Use protection. Right. Yes. So until you and your partner can be tested and you're in this relationship, you both get tested and you know that nobody's going outside. Right. Because people take it for granted, you know, but there, there is not just HIV that is out there. You have some holy for other things. That... You have ST. You have a lot of sexually transmitted um, infections um, other than HIV. And we also, the government is also now paying for something called PrEP. So if it is that you have a partner that you think is exposed, you can now take that pill, PrEP, to prevent you from getting um, 
HIV. So, but because like one of the things that we like, you guys had this thing where you had um some some persons who had HIV who were on TV and they were they came out, which was very in, in, interesting because previously nobody would want would anybody come out to know, to that, know that. that right. And the lady was like, well, she takes her medication and they can't find HIV in her in her. So she's anymore. virally suppressed. So she's virally suppressed. Right. Which is she where we want normal to life. You walk past her on the street, you wouldn't even know. Right. Um, and that's one of the things you don't know who has it and who doesn't. Right. So it's very important that you 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 protect Use protection. And, yeah. Even though it is no longer a death sentence. How did you like working at the Ministry of Health? I loved it. I loved it. It was interesting. Um, I love health. Um, you know, as you know, I'm also a certified personal trainer. So I love the body. I love how the body works. And I'm very interested in health and wellness. So um, it, 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 it complemented what I was doing. Someone was asking, if I may, um, what are your thoughts on your new responsibility now? Well, I don't know what new responsibilities are yet because I, I have not met with the minister or the PS just yet. Um, and so I love a challenge. I'm, I, was, I, I came into politics to serve. And um, wherever the prime minister puts me, um, I think I will definitely serve and serve the people well. But the Ministry of National Security is a big deal, though. I mean, crime and violence and all of those things is something. I mean, even though we have cut murders by um, over 10% and we have cut rapes, cut robberies, cut larcenies, people still are expecting more of us. Yes. You're up to the task? I'm up to the task. I love a challenge and, I, and I'm, I'm a hard worker. Right. I'm a hard worker. And let me just say I'm dedicated to my country. I lived in America for many, 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 many years. Um, one of the things I said when I was 16 was I'm coming back to my country. I'm well, coming back to Jamaica. Leave, leaving. Why did you come back? I love, there was this thing, this connection I can't explain. Every time I came to Jamaica to visit, I would cry. Literally ball. I had a beautiful house in Atlanta. Um, I was just never happy. So you weren't living in Jamaica all this time? <laughs> <laughs> I, li I moved away when I was 16 years old. That's to do the athletic thing. Not to athletics. My mother lived there and she sent for us, myself and my sister. And we migrated, emigrated to the U.S. And I knew I didn't want to leave even then. When everybody wanted to leave Jamaica, I never, I didn't want to leave. I was like, please let me stay. So, so you know, it's an important point you raised because you were an athlete. You represented Jamaica in the Olympics, you're one of our superstars that all of us as young people, you're, you're still- I hope as, you were, you were, as, you were cheering I, for I, me I'm, now. I'm very you, young. You're, you're probably a little boy. Yes. So, <laughs> when but, I was but you had all of these opportunities internationally, but yeah. you still, you came back and decided to go into politics. Yes. You notice how I said it? Yes, it's giving <laughs> back though. And a lot of people don't understand. I mean, I made decent money. I was able to invest. Um, I wanted to come back home. To just live my simple life um and and give back and when i came back i was giving back i was doing my little charity doing my doing little things in in my com in different communities doing you know going to children's home doing different things quietly and i figured you know why not why not go and serve i was chatting and cussing out people Do you I, said, regret it? I i don't regret it i don't regret going into politics at all no there are challenges yes Mm -hmm. Their challenge is, yes, a lot of people, um, we get a lot of cursing. I get a lot of cursing. Um, but <laughs> my back is very broad. And I, you see, I know why I'm doing this. Right. I know why I'm doing this. I love my country. There is nothing better for me than going into a national stadium around the world and looking. The first thing I would do, I'd find my Jamaica flag. I don't, I don't think people understand the love that I would, I would fight for my country. If something is going to happen, no, I would pick up arm. I would bear arms and fight for my country. That is how much I love Jamaica and I love my Jamaican people. And so going around and being a member of parliament, um, it's, you know, when I can touch one life or two lives and people come back to me and say, hey, you know, I, I was at dinner for Mother's Day and a gentleman, I don't know, he just, he came over to me. He was in my server and he came over to me and he says, um, Mrs. Flynn, uh, I just want to thank you because you gave me my first opportunity as an entrepreneur. I'm from so and so, you know, he told where, where he's from and he said, I just want to thank you. Now, I don't remember him. I well, don't, re I don't remember him. I don't remember him that I helped, that I assisted him. But 
we are the first point of contact for many people in our constituency. They don't know where else to turn. They're going to their member of parliament and we must give them answers. We must give them answers. I, I don't think a lot of people appreciate. And the reason why I'm raising is as people on TikTok keep asking about jobs. Um, and when are we going to talk about jobs? I don't think a lot of Jamaicans understand what an MP does. People who are in our constituencies know what we do. Mm -hmm. Because in many cases, there's nobody else for them to turn to. None. None. I have a little knowledge <laughs> about government. I know how the government works. I know how PATH works. I know how Ministry of Labor works. A lot of the farmers in my constituency do not know how they work. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody who is coming from Kingston to come and tell them. Mm -hmm. My job as a member of parliament is to give them, is to educate them, to inform them and to help them. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know. And I think I'm very happy about the job description thing because finally people will get to see a lot of the things. But here's the problem, Juliet. A lot of the things I do cannot be put in a I was just going to, no, but I was just going to say, a lot like, of it is going to be very difficult. Are we then going to exclude and tell people in our constituency who voted for us to represent them or not vote, but just want representation to come to us and want, to, want us to do X, Y, Z. And we say, oh, that is not in my job description. I cannot help you. Is, is that what we're going to do? And so it's very difficult when, when people talk about that. I don't know how. I will continue. I, I'm, we're I'm, represent, we're, we represent the people. I'm from North Central, born and bred. Most of my family still lives there. Farmer, security guard, unemployed, taxi teacher. My family in North Central. I ran because I wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And I love my country. Like you have said, I'm not leaving Jamaica. I've had chances. My mother lives overseas. My father lives overseas. I am not going anywhere. If I'm the last person left on the island, then <laughs> and as a member of parliament, people look up to us. People expect a lot from us. Sometimes them cost me. But I always say to people, you know, I don't have any enemies. I only have misguided friends. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. everybody, every citizen of Jamaica is somebody that I have to respect. And even if they're upset, that is our role as MPs, as leaders. Mm -hmm. And I really want to thank you for coming here with us today. Um, we're doing this, this program. Um, to help Jamaicans understand um, how government works, to have an ability to listen to some of the programs that we're doing that can help them. Um, I see we have the, the we got the, the helpline for the National Council on Drug Abuse. You can right. And so if anybody needs help um, whatsoever, you can call 876-564-HELP, which is the help with 4357. So, so it's 564 43 Five, seven. Yes, and we had a wonderful show, I think. Yes, I think so. I think um, we touched on quite I a number of things. We, we we are not able, and I want to address my TikTok friends, we are not able to, to answer all your questions. Last week we spoke about jobs. This week we are speaking about health. Um, we are not able all the time to answer all questions um, because it's just not possible. Um, so we focus on the topics that we're we're focusing on, and and people are interested in some of these topics: maternal health, HIV, drug abuse, blood 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 bank and blood donations are important topics that people want to hear. And I want to thank the Love One Hundred One family, and I want to thank you, Minister, for coming in. I want to thank the people on Facebook and the people on Instagram. And as usual, we start as we begin. My good friend. Yes. Some say I would, said I could, wondered if I could, battles in my head, times I felt lost and broken, felt like I couldn't make it through the day, but I know God has spoken, and he promised not to leave me, so I'm standing here today, say, how did I get yeah. 